Hi, Bob Greenian here. I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. I am now looking at one side of uh, plate three. So this is the third full plate that I'm looking at. Uh, I've looked at uh, two others, both sides, and I um, didn't find so much on this area that's under the um, Teflon uh, today. Um, however, I wanted to also have a look uh, at the kind of area where the uh, cavitation spots are. Uh, and get some idea of what's going on there. And actually, it revealed something rather interesting. So let's have a look at what you can see here. Obviously, the files will be linked in the description of the video, and you'll be able to um, see them in their full resolution. Now, what I'm referring to here that I think is rather interesting is uh, there are these lines here that you can see carrying down all the way down here, and uh, all the way across here and up here and so forth. And the interesting thing about this for me is uh, however the lines were caused, um, there does seem to be intersections uh, with uh, some of the larger uh, cavitation spots. And if I zoom into this, it's a very high resolution image, so uh, you'll be able to really dig into it. Um, so yeah, you can see here um, very clearly now, it, it, you know, there's two things that I think about these. Um, when I look at them, they look like these two-line Evo marks. And, you know, my romantic, maybe, uh, view of these things may be that uh, these are Evos and they're communicating with each other and uh, they like to share energy and they're spreading it around. And But, you know, there are some other ones here. I know they have some faint lines uh, joining to them. Um, uh, and that that would be the sort of romantic notion that uh, they're kind of like uh, coming together as a community. Oh, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> uh, so you can see over here, there's, you know, there's like this one here is rather beautiful. Uh, we'll zoom in a little bit more on that. Uh, and it's kind of like a, a flower. And then that's connected to this one up here, which is like a flower. And then over here, there's there's a whole bunch of them and it's connected to sort of a zone here. And, you know, that, that would be the romantic view, that uh, uh, they're all kind of working together in some way. And there's, there's some really interesting things, like, like here it's kind of bending around and it joins up to this one. And then all the way down here, um, you can see in this one, where you have uh, sort of an end stop here that it doesn't go on. And, and it looks like there's one there, and then it comes down, there's two along here. and and you go down and funnily enough it kind of bends around here these the, the two lines these are actually the kind of like evo sort of strike marks uh two lines so uh, one line there one line there and it sort of comes around this bit <laughs> now the other uh, view of this is that these could be scratches of course um and that you know maybe air oscillation or energy concentration where you have crossing of uh, scratches or just in the scratch itself. Now, Shoulders did show that if there was a groove, the Evo would travel along it, and so maybe it's a combination of both. And if that is the, really the case, then this actually s suggests a way in which you might be able to increase the activity of your vibrator plate by deliberately scoring it, uh, i.e. you're getting some sort of diamond tool or you know boron nitride or something very hard abrasive tool, then you actually scratch it. And in fact, rather than just relying on some big scratches that are part of the machining process, you, you might like to polish it to a very fine polish and then uh, deliberately scratch a, a grid and, and maybe learn from, you know, what the potential distances are. Uh, the other the other thing is you may get a sense of two spots going on here. I don't know. Um, I haven't really looked at it uh, uh, with any great intensity um, but there are kind of like these kind of seemingly paired ones um, around uh, I don't know uh, see what you think I'm not com overly convinced on that um, lots and lots of analysis will be done um, I'm sure but uh, here we go this is the first large section so this is a plate three and it's it's basically a section over here of the bit that's outside of the, the Teflon area. So, and you can actually see 
the the cavitation spots on there um, so you know they're quite marked uh, but this is what it looks like under the microscope so that's that's the first thing to consider now the second one is uh, uh, various different Evo marks I'm just I'm gonna there's more in the archive that I'll share today uh, with uh, with the description of this video you can download the the archive of these files um, but this is a, a chain and uh, this is the sort of uh, uh, type of track that's been shared um, by other authors. It's a very nice and clean one. It, and it really has like a, a circle, 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 circle. Um, uh, and all the way down, all the way down, all the way down, all the way down. It sort of peters out there. It looks like a chain link fence to me, uh, which is quite nice. And, you know, maybe, maybe it's a ball and uh, around the ball there's a couple of other balls, little ones, and it's kind of rolling like this and it just... Um, you know, it's, it's one way to potentially visualize it and so on. And like I say, the Evo marks tend to stick out um, even under very low lighting, but with the, with the um, polarizing filter, um, if that's what, what we're to assume they are. And this actual one, I measured it and it's uh, 3.781 millimeters long um, for, for, that, for that particular track. Now the next one up is uh, what I call choppy, and it's kind of a bit like an IMA, IMI track. Um, and I've got this in quite high resolution, so you can see. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's a kind of IMI track. You can have a look at that in your own time. Um, uh, see this? Uh, this is it in context with the rest of the plate, and without the polarizing filter on. And you see. It kind of gets more lost. It's much going to be much clearer on your um, monitor than it is here. And I did a measurement on that, and that is uh, 2.946 millimeters. So fairly large thing, really. Now here's something that um, was observed by Matsumoto in the early 90s, and it's a, a kind of like skipping Evo. So it's kind of bouncing around the surface um, and it's got the same kind of shape either side uh, there's a whole bunch of them going on this is actually from uh, a particular part of the plate here uh, and they're kind of bouncing around um, uh, on that area there it might just be the one Evo that did all of these marks um, and I've got some zooming in on that but this is observed on steel plate, but in the case of Matsumoto, he observed them on uh, uh, nuclear emulsions outside of the reactor. Um, but look very, very similar um, to this. So I, I've got a kind of zoomed in version of this at a higher resolution. So you can see these kind of skipping Evo marks. Um, and then I think that the highlight of the day for me um, was the first time I've observed this. Uh, uh, in this system, I observed something similar with uh, a deposit from Echo Fuel uh, on uh, carbon um, uh, tape that you use in an SEM. In fact, it was Me356 that observed it, and later he observed something similar with his own experiment. Um, but actually, Matsumoto, and I think I'll try and share the, the paper. Matsumoto observed this, and uh, he must have known what he was looking at or did some analysis on it. I don't know, but... Um, uh, he seemed to think uh, it was ultra dense hydrogen in crystal form, um, and uh, this is the puppy. So we've got one of our sort of uh, Evo spheres here, and it's kind of dyed, and uh, its content is kind of like crystallized out. And for me, this is the really exciting find of the day. So I have scoured uh, uh, side one and side two. Or and of two plates, uh, plate one, plate two, and uh, one side of plate three, I have not observed anything similar to this on any other of them. Or of them. Uh, and they were all in the same cesium chloride D2O uh, light water mix. Um, and so I, this this is interesting for me because it, it, at the moment it, it's a unique find, but it's not unique in the context of uh, Lena research uh, because, like I say. Uh, we've observed something similar with uh, echo fuel, uh, something coming out of that, and also uh, Me356 observed it and uh, Matsumoto observed it. But this is the first time on a um, uh, 
Amaza vibrator plate. And uh, what I've done is actually I, I did an HDR version of this, so it's slightly higher clarity. So you can really dig into that and consider it. And I did a measurement of it. And this is quite large because it's 181 micrometers diameter. And that is what, 363? Uh, micrometers so uh, best part of a, over over a third of a, a millimeter in size and uh, lovely crystallization out now I know we're gonna say it's a crystal of um, uh, you know whatever the chemical is in there maybe it, it could be but how would you explain a similar kind of thing forming on a, an x-ray emulsion um, and, and, and shoulders is saying and that you know it can capture material and uh, transport it through other material and deposit elsewhere. And the fact is, it, it, here, it's kind of within the same system. But I do find it interesting that it's unique to date uh, uh, on scouring um, uh, effectively five sides of three plates. Um, so there we go. That's, the, that's for me, uh, the highlight of the day. I'm calling it Crystal Ball. And... Uh, uh, enjoy uh, looking at this visual data. Thank you for your time.